Well, welcome uh, to uh, West End High School up in, uh, let's see, your guys are up in Walnut Grove, Alabama, my home state anyway. Um, I'm Kyle Herring with the NASA Public Affairs Office, and I'm joined by Jeff Chancellor. He is the uh, uh, radiation scientist for the uh, National Space Biomedical Research Institute, which is actually located in downtown Houston. Uh, we're about 30 miles southeast of Houston, and we're sitting inside Mission Control. This is the space station uh, flight control room uh, that oversees all of the uh, activities aboard the uh, orbiting complex. And the space station uh, right now is uh, about midway across uh, an Atlantic Ocean pass headed towards South Africa at about 240 miles up. Uh, and uh, we're ready to take questions. And Michael Hare, are you out there? Yes, I am. Good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing? We're doing great, Michael. Excellent. All right. Well, we have some very excited high school students from West End High School in Walnut Grove, Alabama, and uh, they're going to say hi, and they've got lots of questions for you guys right there in the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Students, can you guys say hi? Hello. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hey, hello from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go ahead with your questions there at uh, West End. Come over here to the microphone and ask it. Where's the microphone? Right here. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. If you can get close, as close to the microphone as you can, that'll help us. Uh, uh, what happens if you run out of gas in space? What happens if you run out of gas in space? Well, um, it probably won't end in a very positive result. Um, eventually, you will deorbit and fall back into the um, Earth and probably disintegrate in the atmosphere or perish in the, yeah. in the impact. It's, uh, it's not quite the same as running out of gas, I guess, in your car because you you would obviously just pull over to the side of the road. But the station, um, you know, orbital mechanics keep the station at the altitude that it's at. And every once in a while we can fire thruster jets and, and maintain that altitude. So uh, it's it stays pretty stable. And um, uh, we bring fuel up with some visiting cargo vehicles every once in a while. So. Uh, uh, it's not likely that that's ha going to happen unless we decide that it's going to happen at the end of the station's life on orbit. Exactly. So when the uh, uh, space you. station is in orbit, it's basically in a perpetual um, free fall, and the constant acceleration or to the uh, sideways motion keeps it from um, losing its altitude in orbit. All right, that's turn. I'll ask a question. Cold. I ask. You got to get right here, though. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Okay. What are the estimate radiation exposure for astronauts journeying to Mars, living on its surface for a year and a half, and then returning home? Um, well, the uh, the projections for that exposure are um, a are still um, being exactly determined, but it will be for the entire mission, it will be right at what is um, the career limit for extra exposure for someone who is designated a radiation worker. So it's uh, right now it's um, borderline being um, a safe um, mission in terms of the radiation exposure. But those are still, the, all, the, all the, uh, the mathematics and models are still being um, um, worked out to determine exactly what it'll be. And that's just the nominal exposure. And this is Michael Hare at the Digital Learning Network. Does it, so does that mean that for the spacecraft itself, you have to make sure that it has um, the right protection for such a journey since it's such a long trip? Exactly. Um, they, uh, they study um, exotic materials and, and are, configure the vehicle in ways so that there is as much equipment and mass between the astronauts in the space environment to help shield them from, uh, um, from radiation in space. Uh, next question. Um, how did the recent solar flares affect the astronauts? Um, I don't think it affected them in, in any way at all. 
because of the fact that the uh, the space station is in orbit within the Earth's magnetic field, it acts kind of as a uh, a shield and deflected most of the radiation off of the surface of the Earth. There was some additional exposure from the protons that came from the the solar event being trapped in the Earth's magnetic field, but the shielding of the um, ISS and, and I believe one of the more heavier shielded areas is the U.S. lab where they do most of their daily routine. Um, provided enough uh, uh, safety for them to operate without having to change any of their um, daily routine. If, uh, if too much radiation is, uh, is on the astronauts, how, how would you get them home quickly? I'm sorry, say that again? If they were exposed to too much radiation, how would you get them home quickly? Um, well, there is a, a vehicle um, docked to the space station. They can use that as an escape a vehicle to deorbit and get back to Earth and, and have uh, medical attention provided to them. What happens if you break a bone in space? <laughs> I'm sorry? I think the question was, what happens if you break a bone in space? Um, well, I, I, you, what do you mean in terms of what happens if what <laughs> what they need to do, or how do you take care of the bone? Well, <laughs> there are um, there are astronauts who are designated as the uh, the crew medical officer, and they will provide. Um, assistance in either um, stabilizing them if, and determining in communications with the, uh, the flight surgeon who monitors the health of the crew during the entire mission as whether or not they need to um, stabilize the, uh, the bone or the break in space or deorbit them and bring them for uh, medical attention here in our hospital on Earth. That's a good question. It's one of those specific right, details right. you don't think about until a high school kid asks you. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, and they do have to be careful when they're up in space because it is very easy to move around up on the space station. So they need to be very mindful of how they're orienting their body while they're up in space. Now, for the students at West End High School, I was wondering if we could possibly line up. That way, uh, we'd be able to get one question after another very smoothly. And remember to speak up uh, so we can definitely hear the question. All right, let's go to West End. If you get a cut in space, does your blood just spew out like a shotgun, or does it come out and run down your arm? Um, well, it won't run down your arm because there is a um, there is literally no gravity, so it 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 pulls up and will float actually in the air. So that is actually problematic. So they have to provide some way of being able to capture the blood so it doesn't get into the uh, air circulation system. Very minor things that occur here on Earth are actually even more dangerous in space because of the environment. We've got a few that's got to leave right now and we'll be right back. I've got, I've got to open up the room. There's several students still going to stay with you guys, so uh, we'll be in and out here just a minute. i got to go. All right. Can I ask some questions? All uh, right, next question. Uh, uh, are you a Texas Longhorn fan? <laughs> uh, no, I am an Aggie, and I'm looking forward to playing the uh, the Crimson Tide next year in Kyle Field. Uh, Not happening. <laughs> Roll yeah, Tide. Well, Roll Tide. Yeah, I'm, I'm a University of Alabama graduate. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. It's a, it's a, and Jeff and I are still friends, so we're yes, still we're still okay. Exactly. We're, we're going to have fun next year. It'll be an interesting game next year as we we learn the new SEC environment. But I think the Crimson Tide is in for a surprise when they come to Kyle Field next year. The year after next. Oh. 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 What do you do every day while living on the space station? Um, well, I have never lived on the space station. I'm not an astronaut, but um, they do science experiments. They maintain the integrity of the space station, keep it um, habitable and operating. Um, 
and perform uh, experiments for either biomedical problems or um, other science that they've been asked to uh, um, perform while they're in space. I think the, the mission duration right now is six months for the crew on average. But I would definitely love to live on the ISS for six months. Yeah, I think we all would. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next question. How much medical training do the astronauts and cosmonauts get before they go up to space, to the space station? Um, well, they train for many months and for um, sometimes a year or more prior to a mission. Um, and whether or not there is a, a doctor on board depends on the crew selection, but there is always a crew medical um, officer who has the capabilities to provide uh, emergency medical um, in case of, um, you know, to stabilize a, a crew member is injured and they are on in constant communication with the flight surgeon here in Mission Control who monitors her health for the, um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the entire mission. Okay, I think we have two more before they have to go. Um, I have... What are some genetic experiments that NASA is currently doing in space? Um, well, I am not a biologist, and I'm afraid if I tried to explain any of those, I would, you would be worse off than you are right now by asking me. But I do know they have uh, many experiments going on um, within the NASA community and within SBRI where they are looking at um, specific biomarkers that will um, indicate susceptibility to certain um, stressors that the space environment can cause to a crew. And with that, they're able to um, uh, determine countermeasures or um, what needs to be, or what uh, health problems need to be investigated further. Does food taste different in space? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Does food taste different in space? Um, I know that the, uh, the astronaut crew generally requests foods that are higher in salt and spices. Um, I think it, the, the, the reduced gravity environment suppresses the taste buds, so they look for foods that have a stronger flavor so they can uh, enjoy it. But I, unfortunately, I've never tasted food in space, but I'm looking forward to maybe having that opportunity one day. We have that opportunity to taste it on the ground before they right. fly, but we don't actually get up there to taste it. But that, no, you're, you're no. exactly right. They, that's what crews have said, that their taste buds do change a little bit, and spicier foods is more welcome, I guess, up right, there. Right, right. And I think the foods that are prepared for them have a, a much higher salt content than what we're accustomed to, and it is to, uh, to accommodate their, uh, um, their taste buds in many ways. All right. Well, West End High School, thank you so much for all of those awesome questions. And uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chancellor and Mr. Herring. You're welcome. Uh, we really appreciate being able to visit Inside Mission Control. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Great. Thank you. Thanks for thank joining you us much. here, you guys. Good luck in school. <laughs>